kick off your boots and put down your hunting knife. It's time for the Outdoor Man Podcast with the man himself, Outdoor Man Dan. Join us for fun stories, useful how-tos, and insights into what being an outdoorsman means today and what it may mean in the future. From ethical hunting and conservation to new stories to tell around the fire. Let's get into today's show with your host, Outdoor Man Dan. Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode. So, for this week's episode, this started off on Facebook. It started off with my local Mona's page complaining about some coppice hedging and the locals were going about how the, how the fences and how the hedgerows have been ruined um, and everything else, which wasn't true. It had been coppice for a reason. So I reached out to some people and I ended up meeting up with Dave. Now Dave is a really interesting guy and he's big into hedge laying and literally I had like, the best interview ever with him about, about the hedge laying. Now this bit in front of me is actually a, a jump for the local hunt here which has been laid behind the jump to make it a bit thicker. As you can see here how thick it actually is that, that is great habitat for birds. And that's just one of the one of the outcomes from laying hedges. So I won't ruin the episode. So we're going to dive straight in after I just tell you about this week's sponsors, and then you will get to hear about Dave and everything that goes on with the hedge laying. If you want to find out more about the hedge laying, you can head over to the National Hedge Laying Society, and they will point you in the right direction to go and watch what happens. If you want something doing, or if you want to get involved, go have a look. But before that, so this week's sponsors. So this week's sponsors first really is So You Shoot In. So You Shoot In is a great company who was last week's um, episode. And if you've got a bucket list and things you want to shoot, or you want to go and do something, then check out Sam at, at So You Shoot In. But also um, Podbean. Now, if you want to start your own episode about gaming, you know, the countryside, anything else like that, head over to Podbean and get 10% off your subscription and by using the promo code outdoor b brilliante which was his story but it did sound funny where he was nice and clear and i was hello hello as it were right. oh, it's <coughs> that's great no, honestly thank you very much for doing this because it's been yeah that's all right i don't mind it's been great I mean, we, as a society, try and promote an old dying craft. Yeah. But also, <clears throat> we try and educate. Yeah. Are we going now? Yeah, yeah, it's live, yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, we have a uh, display caravan that we take to the big shows, like the South of England show and the Lawton show and the Heathfield show, all the farm shows in this area. We take it along and it, we display, you know, and we talk about what we do. And, and if it's a summer show, we'll cut uh, birch from the common, plant it in the ground and actually lay it and do demonstrations. Wow. And the idea is to show people what can be done. But secondary to that, um, we advertise for people to come forward with hedges and coppicing that needs doing. We, as a society, we charge, but we charge a reduced rate and we use them for training days. Okay. And then we run training courses for people to uh, learn how to do it. And then they'll put with an old boy and for one event and then they'll get a different person for the next and then after three training days then they'll be given a piece of hedge to lay with a partner another novice and then at the end of that there'll be another competition oh, wow. <clears throat> and we lay hedges in competition it's friendly rivalry really yeah. but um the banter is good and it's a good good day out oh. um it's not just blokes um, we've got several ladies that do it and girls in our society who come along and compete. Um, so we're trying desperately to get younger people involved because I, I suspect the, uh, the average age is probably around 60. <coughs> um, yeah. um, we lay hedges 
as I said, for money. We are a registered charity. And it, it's just about promoting the countryside, really. Yeah. You said to me uh, before we start that there's, there's different different um, methods of laying. Yeah. Different or styles, styles. Should I say. Yeah. Um, which, what, what are them styles? What, what are they and why? Um, there's probably 15 or more, between 15 and 20 different styles. <clears throat> and they de depend on on the landscape, what people are doing with the land. So um, there's a, a Midland style and a Derby style, and that would be used because it's bare on one face. They put all the brush from the hedge through the other side, and you would have that along the side of a bridleway. Or if you've got an arable crop in the field, and then cattle in, in the other side, it's a way of separating it. What we lay is South of England style, and that's a double brush side. So all the, as you cut and pleach a stem, you lay them and they cross over so that <clears throat> you get the brush on both sides. And the idea of that is it protects the roots and it stops the lambs from chewing the new growth. When you cut, it's called a pleach. When you cut a pleach, and lay the stem over you then cut off the heel at 45 degrees that sheds the water to stop it rotting and as long as there's some bark and cambium layer there that will regrow from the heel and then the hinge allows you to lay it over and then everywhere along the branch along the stem wherever there's a bud it will sprout up and it will grow straight up looking for light. I didn't realise that. I didn't realise it grew from the, from, the, from the base from where you've cut. <clears throat> and yeah. I, th I only thought it, it grew from the, yeah. from the top, you know, as, as it were. And to, to cut and lay a hedge, it will last another 100 years, as long as it's trimmed. Yeah. Now, we, we, me and Dad were talking, I, I said to you earlier on, um, as I was coming down here, and... Um, he said that he'd been doing it at home and he couldn't. He didn't really know why and what the benefits were. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, it's got to be to make it thicker and it's, sort of, and it's got to be you know, mm. a better hedge for, mm. for wildlife. But apart from wildlife benefits, what else? Is there any, is there any more benefits, as it were? Well, it becomes a wildlife corridor. <clears throat> Small mammals, for the protection of the hedge, will travel along them, so they use them like a motorway. Um, songbirds will nest in them if they're nice and thick. And if you let them just grow and you've got 15 foot of, of tree, you'll get magpies in the top and nothing else. Where if you lay it, you'll get all sorts of songbirds living in it. <coughs> um, but primarily, it's a stockproof barrier. That's why they were, were made long before barbed wire came along. That's how people kept their cattle in. Do you know what? I'd rather play with barbed wire than <coughs> with hawthorn, to be honest. Anything like that, it's damn stuff to play with, isn't it? Yeah, well, blackthorn is even worse. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It goes septic straight away. Um, they reckon it's been going since men started keeping animals. In this country, originally, as soon as people's, like, Neolithic times, once they settled down in villages, uh, like hillside camps, <clears throat> they would have to look after their animals. And there would have been bears and wolves in this country then. So you had to protect your stock from neighbouring tribes and from predators. Um, <clears throat> and even the Romans, when they invaded in, was it AD 20 or so, they actually wrote down uh, the fact that these strange Britons were weaving weaving and making hedges to keep animals wow. so it's it's been going a long time it's been taken from us rather than us <coughs> taking it from somebody yeah. else yeah wow i didn't know that um the the death of the hedgerow was the war because along comes barbed wire because it's useful to keep people out your trenches yeah um <coughs> during the war because there was a lack of um labor on farms they started using barbed wire and more machinery 
and when the tractors and the combines come in and gradually they got bigger and bigger and bigger so Still you needed bigger. a bigger field so they there was a there was a, an incentive to grub out hedges and make bigger fields <clears throat> it was also around the time of there was a, a problem with rabbits yeah. and that's when they introduced myxomatosis but but really agriculture as determined <clears throat> it started with um you know small farms with about 20 families living in little cottages on the farm and they would plow with horses and they would plant the crops tender the crops um harvest the crops and then in the winter you'd have all these families with nothing to do so they would <clears throat> hedge and ditch traditionally hedging and ditching was a winter thing yeah and and they would look after the hedges keep the animals in and they would clean the ditches out stop flooding um and it's sad that a man on a tractor with a flail can do acres of field whereas in competition we do what's called a cant which is 10 yards and you're given five hours to cut 10 yards wow <clears throat> and really it's six hours work yeah they put pressure on you to to do it in time to separate to find your flaws yeah and it's judged by old hedge layers yeah and it's a bit like crufts is for dogs when you've got very good hedge layers working next to each other you've got to separate them so they're they're looking at the angle of the pleach and how tight it's weave woven how how it's See, when you lay a hedge, you bind it together as you make it. Yeah. You don't just flop it down and put the next one on top. You have to weave it in and, and make it stockproof. Yeah. And then you put stakes in <clears throat> every 18 inches. And then you bind the top with binders, which can be hazel or willow. And that holds the hedge in position for about three years until they rot away. By then, the stake, uh, the, uh, the hedge has taken up the new position. It's holding itself together. So it holds itself together. And that will grow on quite happily. If you just trim the sides and the top, and don't trim the top at the same point every time, yeah. which is what they do with the tractor and the flail. Yeah. They just cut the same line every time. And, and the poor hedge plant, after about four or five, five years, gets a big knotty lump at the top. And it just dies because yeah. it just can't. If they allowed it six inches and cut it, it would continue to grow. Yeah. And, and tighten up as well. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. No, I didn't know that. Oh, amazing. How long have you been doing it? I've been doing it probably about eight years, ten years. My wife bought me a training course at this society at one of the farm shows um to get me out from under our feet probably <laughs> <clears throat> um and we have in the season from when the birds it's it's a september to march job and when the birds start nesting then you can't cut a hedge yeah um so and we have one event every month and sometimes two there's also the national hedge laying competition which we always take part in um, and that combines all the styles from around the country okay there's a yorkshire style where they actually take timber on their shoulder up and and the top of it has like a four by four by one timber nailed to posts at okay. the top of their hedge um in Devon, the Devon style, they always start with a, a huge bank, probably five foot bank with a ditch at the bottom of it. And then they plant two small hedges on the top of it. And then they throw the, the, the muck from the bottom of the ditch in between the two hedges. So the bank maintains its height. Yeah. And that's still a barrier for animals, but most of it's soil. Yeah. You know, so it does change as you go around that's the country. A big, that's, a, that's a big change, isn't it? From, yeah. Because that's hardly a hedge at all, is it, really? No, yeah. but it is a hedge yeah. laid on the top. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, fantastic. 
Um, uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if my microphones will pick it up, but all the wildlife around here is it's absolutely fa all the birds. Yeah, it's fabulous, <coughs> um, and they are just starting to lay now, aren't they? I saw. Yeah, they are nesting. Yeah, I saw a blackbird's egg yesterday. Yeah, cracked on the side of the, on the on the track at work that a crow had, had or a magpie had. had. Yeah, um, it's getting earlier every year. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's climate change. Um, so plow matches. So you do your hedge laying. So you have competitions at plow matches. Yeah. Explain to I say not 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 to me as such the plow matches. But how does a plow match work? Well, the plow match is just keeping alive again the old craft. They they have vintage tractors and they're all in different classes. And you'll get horse plowing, and then <clears throat> every type of tractor you can imagine. They're all in their own class. And they're judged on how straight the furrow is, and is it uniform across there? That's called a cant too. Right. It's a it's a Sussex term for a, a section of land. Yep. It's called a cant. And does and, and does the cant is a cant a cant in Yorkshire? I don't think they use that term in other counties. Obviously, it's the same thing, but yeah, different yeah. terminology. They probably got another name for yeah. it. They talk they, they talk funny up there anyway, don't they? Yeah. But, oh, wow. um, but uh, our hedge laying competition runs alongside the ploughing match yeah. just because it's part of a, you know, a country craft. So you'll do the same at a ploughing <coughs> match. So you'll, take, you'll, you'll, you'll make your hedge, like, like, like at the country fairs, you'll yeah. make your hedge and, and, then, and, then, that, and then lay it. No, they will select a hedge that needs laying oh, okay. on the farm that's doing the oh, okay, competition. Yeah. <coughs> and we would do a normal competition on that farm. And... And they can be a good hedge or a bad hedge. Yeah. And when you get to a hedge land competition, you draw numbers out of a hat because just to make it fair. Yep. Uh, because no hedge is uniform from one end to the other. Well, and, it, and it's split up then, is it? Yeah. And then you pick number like, number four yeah. spot and then you yeah. go four spots up, yeah. as it were. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's simple enough and fair yeah. enough, isn't it? Yeah, it is fair enough. And how well you do depends on your piece of hedge as well. Yeah. So there's a lot yeah, of trying to make a good painting bad, as it were. Yeah. So there's a lot of banter comes into that. Oh yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine it's a bit like so I do triathlon <laughs> as a as a. I would I'd almost say sport, but not yeah, quite. My, my daughter does triathlon. Um, I do three sports badly. Don't know about her. Um, and and I, the thing that always drew me to that is the fact that we all want to do well in our own little bubble. Yeah. But everybody's for you as well. Yeah. And I suppose that, that's that yeah. same thing comes yeah. along. In the hedge yeah. lane. And that's what it's about. It's not just about, you know... It's also a social thing. thing. Very yeah. often, we'll go to the pub after and have a couple of pints. And on the events, <clears throat> on a hedge lane training day, very often the farmer will provide food. Okay. A bowl of soup or a bit of stew or yeah. burger or something. Yeah. Um, and then when we have our own annual event, there will be a pub meal afterwards. Yep, and then all the um, <clears throat> all the results are read out at the end of the meal. Yeah. Um, so we all go to the pub and leave the judges in the field looking <laughs> at the head. Yeah, scratching and deciding yeah. what they're going to do. Yeah, it's a it's it's very much a sociable yeah thing to do as well as good for the countryside. Oh yeah, it, the benefits are, are fantastic. How long, how long, when did you lay these hedges that we're in your garden here now? Um, <clears throat> I think that piece there I probably laid about six years ago. Um, the bit from this tree around the corner I did uh, two years ago, oh, probably. Two, two, maybe three years ago. On your own or? Yeah, on yeah. my own. Just, on just, my own. just it's, plod along. And... The only time we work in pairs is if it's novices. Okay. And they're, because it's a bit daunting to lay a whole cant on your own yeah. as a novice. And um, what, do you, what do you use to, to lay them? Because obviously like most people are in a hurry and it's a chainsaw job. Uh, so well, it depends on, on the stems really. Um, we use a bill hook mostly. And then you can use a, a Yorkshire pattern bill hook. 
right. which has got a, uh, an axe on one side and a bill hook on the other. Another one you mean, I yeah. I think it was designed by the Romans. <clears throat> um, and then a pair of loppers. I use um, a petrol chainsaw, but I've also got a battery paint chainsaw, which is perfect for... A lot quieter as well. Yeah, yeah. And more and more people are getting electric yeah. battery operated chainsaw. I can understand that. I mean, it doesn't sound, a chainsaw doesn't sound like a chainsaw unless you've got a big roaring engine, yeah. but it's so much more pleasant just yeah. to yeah. cut and get on with it. And like, then I use a side axe. A side axe has got one side flat and the other side tapered so that you can get in tight to a stem. Okay. Whereas a normal axe will have two tapered sides and yeah. that will pull, pull the piece away too quick. Um, and then you use a, a hand axe with, um, and that's to split down. When you, when you make your first cut of the pleach, then if you put an axe into the, into the pleach and turn it, that will split the grain down and help you to bend. Yeah, it'd be, like, be like splitting wood, but yeah, not, but, but yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, man. And then you use um, a swap hook clearing the ground around the hedge <clears throat> and then once it's laid you'll use that to to trim up the sides just to make it look uniform yeah um a rake a pitchfork to get rid of the stuff you know the a boatload of matches to burn the crap up i suppose well it's usually down to the the farmer comes along with a four end loader and just pushes Skips it in a up. heap <clears throat> yeah but, um but we also coppice, and the idea of coppicing is to get the materials to do the hedge laying, the stakes and the binders. Yep. So we coppice for free to landowners in to order get... to take the material away. Okay, yeah, I'm with you. And it's also good for novices to learn what coppicing is about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's, what I was, that's what the reason why I, I contacted you in the first place was because the, um, the Locals Moaners page was on about our hedge that had been coppiced right down yeah. and well that is left open a standard thing to do yeah. if it's in such a state and there are big gaps it was, a, it's a, it was a horrendous hedge you couldn't lay it and get anything sensible so if you coppice it at the right height above the ground you take the whole thing away you've got that huge root bowl which is going to send up all those shoots and then all you've got to do is plant in between and then in five years, you've got a hedge again. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the root, a lot of the, um, say the root stock, the, uh, the trunks and that, were the size of that um, ash, is it? That's it there? No, it's not an ash. No, it's chestnut. Chestnut. Um, yeah. You know, that size, they were no good for nothing. And there was gap, you know, yeah. meters of gaps, not just yeah. a small gap. And yeah. it was just straight down. They've plugged the, um, the gaps with some, um, you know, they've... Uh, you know, plant some more hedge whip. and some, some whips in, and yeah, it, you know, like I said, in, in a year, two years' time, that'll be a hedge again, it, like, and like nobody ever touched it, yeah, you know, it'll, it'll yeah. look good. Um, but people, yeah, but people, oh, I've ruined the countryside, and well, we get that in, in a competition, we're actually cutting and laying a hedge, and people will stop and complain <laughs> yeah. that you're, you know, you're damaging it, yeah, and it's, it's about education, really. Yeah. And when they understand, if you're in a competition, you haven't got time to talk. But if you're just laying a hedge, you can explain. And once they understand, they're happy. Yeah. It's, it's education, really. Yeah, it's, it's Which amazing. is what this is all about. Really. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Um, the ignorance of some people is great. I love it. It's just yeah. a case of uh, uh, open the mouth first without even thinking about, yeah. well, what the, are you doing? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a more efficient way of destroying a, re a hedge. Yeah, exactly. The flail, for instance. Yeah. Oh, I've seen plenty. I've seen plenty of front and fore end um, loaders go into a hedge to yeah. get the chuck combine in. Yeah. Because machinery is getting bigger and fields are starting, you know, well, yeah. fields are getting smaller because hedges are coming back because of the stewardship they are scheme coming and back, and that's a good thing. Hundred um, percent. You know, beetle <clears throat> banks, all that. You know, I've, I'm up for all of it because mm. we need it desperately. Um, His Royal Highness Prince Charles is the patron of our society yeah. and he holds um, a hedgeland competition on one of his properties every year. 
So it could be at high grove. And the year before last, there wasn't one this year because of the COVID, but last year's one was at um, Sandhurst. Sandringham. Sandringham, sorry. And um, on the estate. And he, he takes a, a great interest in it. It really And he actually that. lays hedges himself. In fact, sometimes he will actually, you know, do a cant at the end. Yeah. Um, and they provide food and it's a nice day out. Uh, the one at Sandringham was um, particularly for younger, younger hedge layers. Yeah. So it was a competition for them, but we were invited along to work with them. And um, sort of competition, train aid, all mixed in one. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Yeah. I, remember, I remember slightly off topic going to Balmoral um, one year with the dogs with dad and uh, they were saying that one of the woods was having a load of timber taken out, the Duke and um, Prince Charles wanted out and um, they were looking and it didn't happen in the end because of the cost but they were looking to, to use horses yeah. to, to get to the timber out. Pull them out, yeah. And um, Prince Charles is very much into to all that and, and I it needs to be it needs to be done because people need to understand it and yeah and it's gonna be lost you know i had a friend who used to do a lot of plan competitions who who died um a couple of years ago now roger clark he was you know big into plat big into the suffolks the suffolk punches yeah and it's it's going like you said you know the, the average age is you know late 50s early 60s and um that won't be long till it's 70s yeah you know, it soon oh, creeps got, up on we've you. We've got 70s and 80-year-old hedge layers yeah. still competing in competition. But if there's no young stock coming through, <clears> it's going to be lost. Yeah. Well, that's the whole idea of the, you know, getting training courses going for younger people. Yeah. Do you do as many shows as you can, do you? We do. We do. We do about five, five or six in a year. Yeah. And... And then usually we demonstrate at a show. If it's the right time of year, then we can do a, a live hedge. Yeah. Um, there's one at the South of England show at Ardenlie. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then there's the Bentley Wood Fair. Um, and they're usually later in the, in the year, so we can actually lay a piece of hedge. And we've got a hedge there that we just do an, a section of every year we go. We're gradually yeah. getting down. Yeah. Um, like I was gonna say it must be fun in the summer doing it. If you got, a, if you, you know, got your got your made up hedge at a ring and you you're doing it in the heat, that sh must be yeah lovely fun. Yeah. yeah. People, Just for you in life. It's amazing. People come out and ask if they can buy it. Really. And all we've done is is stuck birch. You take a <coughs> a pole, make a hole, put the birch in, thump it in with your heel. And then once you've got a line of them, we just cut them and lay them and then stake and bind it as yeah. we would normally. And very often we'll put it on a curve because yeah. it looks nicer. Yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't believe how many people come along and think they can buy it and take it home and grow it. Yeah, yeah. It, it just, you know, got no concept. The right time of year, it'd probably take. Well, if it was willow, it would. Yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. Uh, thank you very much for doing it. It's been, it's been an absolute pleasure. To have You've been listening to the Outdoor Man Podcast. We're glad you're here. We'd love to connect with you on social media. Find us on Twitter at Podcast Outdoor, on Instagram, Outdoor underscore Man underscore Podcast, on Facebook, Outdoor Man Podcast, and you can even reach us by email, dan at outdoorman.uk. Let us know your outdoor questions and be sure to tag us when you're outside living your best life. Until next time, be the example.